Cats and dogs are lovable, playful, and in most cases harmless, but their wild relatives are the fiercest carnivores alive, many of them apex predators and even occasional man-eaters. And before humans were around, there were even larger versions of these animals stalking the planet. Felines evolved in Asia, and canines evolved in North America, so when the land bridge opened up between these two continents, these two families were thrust into direct competition. Felines and canines are found within the carnivora clade that contains nearly all the terrestrial predatory animals like hyenas, bears, weasels, and even some aquatic predators like seals. Before the carnivorans, another group of very similar mammals used to be the dominant mammalian carnivores. They were called creodonts. Within this group, there were animals like the cat-like Patriophilus, and there were hyenodonts that were some of the largest terrestrial carnivores since the dinosaurs and looked very dog-like. They were so similar, in fact, that they were once thought to be the ancestors of carnivorans, but it has since been realized that these similarities were just superficial, as they had just converged on similar body plans and hunting strategies, and they are now known to be their own group, more closely related to pangolins. Interestingly, despite their lifestyle and appearance, funnily enough, pangolins are not closely related to armadillos, and according to their DNA, are in fact the closest living relatives to carnivorans, and the creodonts were even more closely related. A likely common ancestor of cats and dogs was called Dormalosian latori, of which there are fragmentary remains dating back 55 million years ago found in Europe, and it was thought to be a tree dweller due to its ankle bones. Very early on in their evolution, they split into two groups, caniforms and feliforms, or dog-like and cat-like animals. Along with cats on the cat-like side is where hyenas and fooses evolved from. Along with dogs on the dog-like side is where bears, seals and raccoons evolved from. A member of the dog-like carnivorans found its way to North America, where it would evolve into the very first canid. Relatively shortly after this, during the Oligocene, about 30 million years ago, the canid family separated into three distinct subfamilies. First there was the Hesperocyaninae, then the Borophaginae, and finally the last group to evolve were canines. The founding member of the Hesperocyaninae group was called Hesperocyon and it had some unquestionable traits giving it away as a canid. Its ear bones were arranged in a canid fashion. Its top row of back teeth stretched out further than their bottom row, which gave them leverage while crushing bone. Despite these features, its appearance wasn't that dog-like, and it had retractable claws that later canids would lose. Because of its claws and overall body shape, it was probably a good tree climber. Borophaginae, the second group to diverge from the lineage, are often referred to as the bone-crushing dogs. They got this name because they have distinctive marks on their teeth similar to what hyenas have, and they are famous for eating bone. The largest species of Borophaginae were most likely hypercarnivorous, being the top predators in their ecosystems. And this group included Epicyon, that was the largest canid of all, possibly weighing up to 200 kilos. Finally, canines are the ancestors of nearly all the currently living dogs. The evolution of felines is not as well understood due to less fossils being known, but the first ever feline started to appear a little over 30 million years ago in Asia and Europe. The first cats to cross into America were called Pseudolurus, and they were very successful, as there are five species being known from the continent. These cats crossed the land bridge 20 million years ago, which put them in direct competition with the some 30 species of dog that were now living here. And unfortunately, the success of the cats was at a cost to the dogs, Older canids in North America enjoyed a much larger ecological diversity than they do today. For instance, the later species of Borophagino were thought to be short pursuit or ambush predators, closing in on their prey silently and only running a short distance to catch it. This is a niche that mountain lions fill, and many different prehistoric cats that were known from North America also filled. It is thought that cats were better at this niche than any dog, as Borophagans saw a sharp decline when cats arrived on the continent. One feature that cats have, possibly giving them an edge in this way of life, are their retractable claws. The ability to pull out their claws only when they need them would mean they could keep them from wearing down and giving them an edge in an ambush situation. It is also possible that smaller cats could have outcompeted some of the tree climbing canids as well. Pseudolurus, the first cat that arrived in North America, was thought to be a good tree climber. This was due to its slender body shape and short legs making its build similar to other carnivorans living today that are known to spend a lot of their life in the trees. Due to this, the canids occupying climbing niches could also be threatened by the arrival of felines. Felines may have been proven to be better carnivores, evidenced by their domination in a lot of niches, but luckily for the currently living canids, there were some areas that they couldn't compete with. Canines do not tire easily and do not rely on ambush tactics to catch their prey like big cats. 
A grey wolf could travel 30 miles a day in the search of food and exhaust their prey through a superior stamina, a way of life that hasn't really been replicated by any felines to this day. Due to these adaptations, canines were not just able to survive in North America alongside the feline onslaught, but thrive. They also travelled in reverse to the cats, crossing through Alaska into Asia, Africa and Europe, spreading and diversifying and holding their own against any cat in these continents. They even crossed into South America along with felines after the Panamanian land bridge opened up, and were very successful, outcompeting many of the native species, with several species being endemic to South America today. Canines on average make for better generalists than cats and their old relatives, making them more adaptable. The downfall of the large Borophaginae may have been due to them being hypercarnivorous specialists, only eating fairly large prey. In comparison, grey wolves have an extremely diverse list of prey, hunting animals as big as bison and muskox, to as small as beavers and hares. A similar process is happening again today, where canids are still largely successful around the world, whereas nearly all big cats are endangered, as their specialist niches are less tolerable to changes in the ecosystem. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to be updated at future content, then consider subscribing.